It's how to get rid of grudges, bitterness, and resentment. Uh, let's face it. It's not easy to forgive someone who conned you money. They made you believe it was an investment. It had turned out to be a pyramid scheme. They messed up with your credit, and now you're paying bank loans for years. Or maybe you even rented a house on behalf of somebody, bought a car on behalf of somebody. They had promised to pay you, but they ended up messing up with your credit. It hurts. It's not easy to forgive someone who promised to marry you, just to sleep with you, ghost you. You feel dirty, used, and dumped. Yes, the Lord tells us to love everyone, to forgive everyone, but this is difficult. It's not easy to forgive someone who divorced you after you helped them to get on their feet. You started from scratch together as young people, and when they reached the top, they literally forgot about you and moved with someone else. Some of them even went an extra mile to try to destroy you and to mess up with your life. They left you at ground zero. They abused you. It's not easy to forgive someone who promised you a job or promotion just to take advantage of you. It's not easy to forgive a business partner who squandered the money you guys invested together or they kicked out of the company you founded. You found yourself one day that you don't even have shares. It's not easy to forgive someone who raped you. This is a very deep wound. Worse, if it's someone you trusted, a relative, a father figure, a mother figure, a relative who is so close to you, this was a daddy to you or a mom to you. It's not easy to forgive someone who molested your child or a gunman who shot your child or a loved one and they have never been arrested or caught, hit and run. It's not easy to forgive such a motorist who knocked down your loved one. It's not easy to forgive a parent who abandoned you as a child. They never supported you. You grew up like an orphan at your mom and your dad was somewhere, and maybe they remarried and forgot about you. It's not even easy to forgive a partner who couldn't listen to you. It's not easy to forgive someone who falsely accused you, you went to prison, or someone close to you went to prison, or they were deported on false accusations. It's not easy to forgive a friend you trusted. You were vulnerable with them. You shared your deep secrets just for them to go around gossiping, telling everyone who would care to listen. You feel exposed. You feel like a laughing stock among your circles. You know, when you are betrayed, the most natural emotion is resentment. Resentment is a feeling of anger and bitterness at someone who wronged you, someone who mistreated you. You know you resent someone if you are angry with them, you hate them, you are bitter with them, you nurse grudges, you have hard feelings, Inside of your heart, there is hostility. You are uneasy in their presence. If you have a resentment, this morning, the Lord is challenging you in Hebrews 12, verse 14 to 15. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. That does not mean keeping people but refusing to keep grudges and bitterness. So make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Bitterness defiles you. Bitterness makes you fall short of the glory of God. Bitterness compromises your holiness. When you have a staff in your heart, the Bible explains, you are falling short of God's grace because forgiveness is the ability to extend grace. Resentment destroys the vessel in which it is stored. 
It destroys the career. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting someone else to die. But let's be very frank with each other. Sometimes resentment is not a result of how people hurt us and those who wounded us. Sometimes resentment is a product of envy and jealousy and unhealthy competition. There is a girl you wanted to marry and another guy whom you met in your place of work or in college married that girl. There is a guy you had a crush on, but unfortunately he ended up, you know, uh, marrying another woman. This could be your best friend. They didn't marry you. Uh, the guy married another girl who was your best friend. And you resent these people. Or you're with someone in high school or in college. And truth be told, they are doing better than you financially. They are doing better than you maybe in business. Maybe they ventured into politics and now they are an MP somewhere or a governor, a senator. Or in the corporate world, they are directors of a large multinational organization, yet you are classmates. Or they could be a CEO earning a lot of money. You see them enjoying holidays overseas. And though you can never admit, inside of you there is some jealousy, some envy. Proverbs 14, verse 30, I'm reading from the Living Bible. Proverbs 14, 30. A relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Jealousy rots it away. A relaxed attitude makes you live longer. That's the word of God enhances longevity when you celebrate them, even though they are doing better than you, maybe in one area, maybe in their marriage, maybe in their career, maybe in their finances. When you celebrate the people who are doing well, it actually lengthens your own life. When you envy them, jealousy rots away your life. It begins to eat you up. The NIV puts it this way. A heart at peace gives life to the body. When your heart is at peace, it gives life to your body. But envy rots the bones. The New Living Translation, a peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer in the bones. When you're jealous with someone, when you're envious with them, Scripture says it's like you have cancer that is eating you up. Cancer spreads, destroys other organs. So when your heart is at peace, your body is healthier and you live longer. When you, have, when you harbor jealousy and envy, you look older than your true age. You look weaker. And I regret to say you even look ugly. When your heart is at peace, you look more beautiful, you look younger, and you live longer. A better heart, a healthy life. A bitter heart, a sick life. A better heart, a healthy life. When your heart is at peace, long life, you have positive energy, you attract people, and if you attract people, your relationships are better, your job is better, your career is better, your business is better. A bitter heart, a sick life, you become depressed, you look older, you will die earlier, yes, there are many people who die ahead of what God had intended for them. And when your heart is bitter, people begin to avoid you. When people begin to avoid you, you become depressed. You destroy your relationships. You destroy your career. You destroy your job. You destroy your business. Because customers, employees, suppliers of goods and services begin to avoid you. There is hostility between you and financiers, between you and your workers, between you and your customers, and the more they avoid you, the more you struggle in your business. To get rid of grudges, bitterness, and resentment, three steps. That's my message for you this morning. Three steps to get rid of grudges, bitterness, and resentment. Step number one, identify the impurities in your heart. What are you carrying in your heart? towards your ex, towards a relative who took advantage of you, towards an employer who took advantage of you, 
towards someone who hurt you, someone who was malicious with you, someone who wanted, who wanted to destroy your life. What do you do? Step number one, identify the impurities. This could be envy in your heart, or hate, anger, bitterness, hostility, hard feelings. These are impurities. Now, you may ask me, Pastor, how do I recognize the impurities? That's a good question. Your words. You recognize the impurities by your words. How? If you are, you are still speaking how this person hurt you, you have not yet released them. If you are still discussing how your father hurt you when you were young, you have not yet recovered. If you are still discussing the terrible things your ex did on you, you have not yet recovered. If every time you open your mouth, you're discussing how your child hurt you, you have not yet healed. You have not yet forgiven them. Think about the person. Every time you tell the story, you're always speaking about the, how they hurt you. That's an indication there are impurities in your heart. Because that's what Jesus said. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34, Luke 6, 45. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if your heart is full of bitterness, you keep on speaking and narrating bitter stories, bitter experiences. If your heart is full of anger because of someone who offended you, every time you open your mouth to speak about them, you are still angry. You are still frowning. You still have a hostility. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your tongue is a slave of what is in your heart. It just betrays what is in your heart. It reveals what is in your heart. How do you know your heart is clean? Forgiveness. You know your heart is clean of impurities when you are able to forgive. The Lord Jesus on the cross, he looked at the guys who tormented him and killed him for no cause. And he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Luke 23, 34. Jesus did not want to die with any bitterness, any grudges, any hostility. Jesus knew this principle, that when you have hostilities, it compromises your holiness. Think about the people who arrested him and pulled his beard and drove a crown of thorns in his head, and used a rod to crush his head, flattened his head, striped his body until there was no flesh. They began to plug the bones. His heart melted within him. It melted like wax. The tongue stuck on his mouth. And after all this, he looked at all his tormentors and killers and said, Father, forgive them. I do not want to come home with any grudges or any bitterness. Forgive them, Father. Why? For they know not what they are doing. What is Jesus telling us? The people who attacked you, they don't know what they are doing. The person who tried to destroy you, they don't know what they are doing. It could even be a parent who did what they did out of ignorance. People of understanding don't destroy others. They elevate others. They promote others. They lift others up. It is people with ignorance that pull others down. That's why Jesus said they don't know what they're doing. People who don't understand how life works, crucify others. People who understand everything you do to someone comes back to you. Life is a large echo. Whatever you give, boomerangs back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. When you understand that, you plant seeds of love and goodness and mercy and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. Why? You want to harvest the same. It comes back to you. It's ignorance that makes people tear each other down, pull each other down. When you understand that, you forgive their ignorance. You forgive them because they did what they did out of ignorance. Paul writes, Ephesians 4.32, Forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave you. God forgave you after you rebelled against him over and over again. A lot of secret sins that nobody knows except you 
and God. Out of dirty past that you have lived, yet God gave you no condition for forgiveness. He forgave you in Christ and he's not challenging you. Forgive others all their sins with no conditions just as Christ, as God forgave you in Christ. For your own good. Because when you don't forgive, it is destroying you. It's eating you up. It's destroying your health. It's compromising your longevity. Your purpose in life is being compromised. You invest your energies on the wrong things. You are now focused on the wrong things. You are distracted from pursuing your God-given mission by the person who offended you. They hold you back to the past. Every time you don't forgive, it's like you're tied with a rope. You're tethered to your past. You're being held back by your past. You have empowered that person to control your present and your future. They have manipulated you right now. You're not at peace with yourself. And you're not at peace with those around you. Why would you empower anyone to control your energy levels? So forgive them just as in Christ God forgave you. Ephesians 4, 32. What, why should you do that? Because people will offend you from time to time. It's not a question of if, but when. Even after this service, in the course of this week, in the course of this month, in the course of this year, God forbid, but somebody's going to offend you. It could be a motorist who doesn't even know your name. They don't even know you exist. And your current baggage of someone who has no idea what's your name or nationality or your beliefs. Somebody will offend you in your place of work. Out of nowhere, offense must happen. Jesus said, offense must happen. Matthew 18, 7, Luke 17, 1. Offense must happen. So how do you handle offense? You see, a swimming pool will pick a lot of impurities. Why? Dust, smoke, pollen, it will pick. The difference between the swimming pool and a fish pod is because somebody cleans the swimming pool from time to time. That's why the waters of the swimming pool are always clear. And that's exactly what scriptures tell you. Just like the swimming pool. Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4.23 Guard your heart from impurities, from dust, from pollen, from smoke. There is, you know what? All these impurities are in the air. They are looking for somewhere to land. Don't be the dustbin where people dump their garbage. That's basically what the word of God is saying. There are so many impurities out there. If you don't guard your heart, you're going to destroy your work, your business, your relationships. You will never be able to overcome addictions that you struggle with. Everything you do flows from your heart. Guard it above all other things. Guard it. Put a password to your heart. Be careful who speaks into your life. Watch out who influences your values. To get rid of grudges, number two, empty the impurities. Empty the impurities. The Lord Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Without purity of heart, you will never see God. That's what Jesus is saying. Your heart must be clear of all these impurities, anger, bitterness, rage. And I'm not just talking about heaven. I'm saying in this life, you won't see God intervene in your business, in your family, in your relationships when you have bitterness. Every time God wants to intervene in your marriage, there is bitterness. You don't see God. Before we talk about seeing God in glory, right in this life, if you want to see God in your relationships, in your work, in your business, then you need to have a pure heart. That's when you'll get a breakthrough in the work of your head. So Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart. Pure, pure, pure. The root word, that word pure, pure. The, it comes from the root word cathartic. From where we derive the word catheter. The paramedics in our midst understand catheter. 
You know, when someone is going through a surgery, the doctors put in you a catheter to get rid of impurities. They know you're full of impurities. So when you're going through an impure, uh, uh, a surgery, an operation, they have to put a catheter in you to get rid of impurities. So the doctors are not concerned that your body is having impurities. No, 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 no. Their concern would be if you remove the catheter. Then that would be their concern because then your body will be poisoned and that can kill you. Impurities kill. So Ephesians 4, 31, Paul writes, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, blurring and slander, along with every form of malice. The Apostle Paul is saying, this is your responsibility. When the Lord Jesus is operating in your heart, he's operating on your body, he's transforming you into a new creature. Don't tamper with the cavita. He has put it in there to get rid of impurities. Get rid of all, all, not some, all bitterness. After this service, I beseech you by the mercies of the living God, if you are bitter against anyone, you have rage and anger, blowing is fighting, slander is gossip and maligning someone. For years, you have talked bad about this person. Let this be the last time you will ever open your mouth to speak ill about them anymore. Not for their sake, not because they have become good, but for your own goodness, for your own sake, for your own purity of heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Let this be the last day you'll be, you'll be harboring malice. Malice is a desire to destroy someone. It is your job to get rid of all bitterness. Today I wanted to do a couple of funny things, funny exercises with you. And I have no good reason for doing it. If you like them, fine. If you don't like them, I'll never repeat again. So I want us to assume this is uh, life. Water is life. Let's assume water is life. And the marbles in this glass are impurities. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying. You've got to remove... This is your heart. This tabla, this glass, presents your life. Water, heart, your heart. This glass presents your heart. Water presents life. And the marbles present impurities. This water doesn't look clear. It looks blue. I put blue marbles here. The Apostle Paul is saying, it is your job to remove these impurities. Remove them one by one. Remove anger. Remove hostility. Remove bitterness. It is still looking blue. So long as there are impurities, the water won't look clear. Keep removing rage. Trust God and purpose. Come up with ways to avoid anger. Avoid malice. Avoid gossiping that person. Let this be the last day. Remove it. Never talk any ill about them anymore. This is the last day you are bitter with that person. Let go. Set yourself free from the prison. You have imprisoned yourself for too long. Get rid. That's exactly what the Bible is saying. And your heart is pure. You can see God. I can see you through this glass now. Can you see me? I can see you now because it's clear. That's what the word of God is saying. You might ask me, but pastor, how do I get rid of these marbles? How do I get rid of these impurities? Jesus and Jesus alone answered this question. Now, you didn't get me. I'm a researcher. Most of you know I'm a lecturer. And I love researching. I have tried to check document after document. Even academic papers to find out who has a formula of how to remove impurities from the heart like bitterness and anger and rage, I have tried to check many write-ups. I have cross-checked with many books. And I'm telling you, not a single soul came up with the answer to this, except Christ. The people who have written books on the same, all were quoting Christ. All of them were quoting Christ. So Jesus said four things to remove all this bitterness and rage and anger and malice and blowing. Jesus gave us the formula in Luke 6, 27 to 28. He said that I could, but to you who are listening, I'm giving you four ways to remove these things from your heart. Number one, 
love your enemies. Number two, do good to those who hate you. Number three, bless those who curse you. And number four, pray for those who mistreat you. Before I explain this, just realize how the world works. How does the world work? They do the exact opposite. They say, hate your enemies. Do bad to those who hate you. Curse those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you to fail. That's the world. Jesus said, you want to, your heart to be pure? You want to get rid of bitterness and grudges and resentment? This is the formula. Love your enemies. That's the first step. It's not going to be easy. And you're not doing it for their sake. You are doing it for your own sake. The same way God loved us while we were yet seen us. He didn't love us when we changed. Scripture says, while we were yet seen us, Christ died for us. Step number two, do good to those who hate you. Even when you're growing up, an uncle took advantage of you. And right now you know their child is needy. They need school fees. Pay that school fees if you can. Do good to those who hate you. You are heaping hot coals on their head. If you do good to someone who did you bad, you are heaping hot coals on their head. You are making them confused. They expected you to reiterate because it is the natural way of doing stuff. Then he says, bless those who curse you. It's a father, it's a mother who spoke cursing words to you, but you speak blessings to them. They spoke the bad things to you, the wrong things to you. When you speak good things, what are you doing? You are freeing your heart. This may never change them. But when you speak the right things to them, you are setting your heart free. Jesus is teaching you how to empty the bitterness and the rage and the grudges and the resentment that are cancer to your bones, that are destroying you. And then finally, pray for them. Why should you do that? Transfer vengeance to God. Every time you pray for someone who mistreated you and you're telling God bless them, God come through for them. God, I pray remove the pride in them, the hostility, bless them, help them to see you. What are you doing? You're transferring vengeance to God. You're telling God, I have handed over the matter to you. When you're bitter with them, you handle the matter. You carry the matter. And guess what? You have no capacity to change a human being. You have no capacity to change your husband. You have no capacity to change your wife. You have just been cheating yourself. People change when God changes them. You have no capacity to change an employer who took advantage of you. So you are here holding onto something you have no capacity to carry, unnecessary baggage, unnecessary burden. When you pray for them, you transfer that responsibility to God. You're telling God, I've added over the matter to you. So remove all these things by doing what? Love your enemies. Two, do good to them whenever you get a chance and then you fight this guy who mistreated you. They are stuck by the roadside. Carry them. Drop them to the nearest, safest place. Bless those who curse you. Don't speak to them the way they spoke to you. You end up fighting more. You know when you exchange words with them, you end up being bitter all the more. You become angry all the more. You destroy yourself all the more. And finally, pray for them. I discovered something. Whenever you pray for someone who has offended you, tension begins to ease between you and them. And as you pray for them, don't tell them you're praying for them. Don't. Do it in your closest, in your hideaway, in your closet. You don't need to tell them. But when you do that, you diffuse the hostility, the negative energy that exists between you and them. When you begin praying for someone, test this. Test what I'm telling you, whether it's with a partner, whether it's with a parent, whether it's with a child, a colleague, a peer, somebody who hurt you and you're in college together, begin praying for them. One day, they will make a phone call to you. You don't even need to call them. You can test what I'm telling you. It works. When you pray for them, God begins to destroy the tension, the hostility between you and them. Love begins to develop. The cause of love, because when you pray, you invoke God, and God is love. When God comes in a situation, hostility ceases. 
To get rid of grudges, bitterness, and resentment, step number three, and the last one, expect to be filled. Expect to be filled. You see, I removed all these mumbles. They're occupying a certain space in your heart. So as much as your heart is clean right now and clear, there was too much space occupied by the marbles. Look at this. This glass was full if you didn't realize. But because of this, the impurities, it looks like half full or slightly less than half because there was so much space occupied by anger and rage and bitterness. So now I'm saying, expect the Lord to fill you with life. Why? You have created space. You have created enough space for the Lord to fill your heart with life. Water is life. Jesus said it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Matthew 5, 6. When you hunger for righteousness, what's that? Righteousness is doing the right thing in the sight of God. When you hunger and you thirst for the right things before God, God promises he will fill your heart with righteousness, doing the right things before him. Psalms 103 verse 5, I'm reading from the Good News Translation. He fills my life with good things so that I stay young and strong like an eagle. When I create that space, the psalmist says, he fills my life with what? Good things, with life. He fills me with life. And when he fills me with his life, then I can stay young and strong like the eagle. Watch this. The good things we are discussing here are not houses and vehicles and clothes. No, 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 no. Those are not the things that keep you young and strong. The things we are discussing here is what God feels in your heart. So what the psalmist is saying, he fills my heart, my life, with good things. When he fills my heart with the right things, I stay young, fresh, energetic, and strong like an eagle. What does an eagle do? Soaring high. I'm able to soar to high levels of success in my career life, in my relationships, in my business. I'm, I'm lighter. The burdens are down. I'm able to behave like the eagle and go past the cloud of bitterness, past the clouds and the storms of anger and rage. I'm able to soar higher and higher to my God-given potential, to what God intended of me. That could not happen when my heart was full of all the wrong things, anger and bitterness and grudges. They are keeping you below the clouds. But when you remove them, you soar above the clouds. But if you're not born again, and you're listening to me, you're in this church, or you're following me through social media, I regret to tell you, your heart is contaminated. You, are not, you don't even have the capacity to clean up your heart. And I came with something just to illustrate that. I went to the supermarket yesterday, and I bought some food color. One of the things I found about food color, a very small drop of food color. The one I have is red. You can buy any food color, just a single impurity, a single drop. And the entire water changes the color, just a single drop. For the believer, they can remove the marbles. For the one who doesn't know the Lord, your heart is already contaminated. The enemy has planted his seeds his nature, and you have no capacity to change your heart. And I'll show you in scriptures. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is not, you cannot purify your heart. It is full of another nature. For us to purify this, only the life of Christ can change it. If I continue pouring life, the clean water, Eventually, the poisoned water will come out of your heart. If I continue pouring the life of Christ, he clears your heart with his life. And eventually, what happens? You become clear and clean. Only Jesus can change the heart. Amen? Thank you so much. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17, and I'm going to read from the Living 
Bible. The Living Bible says, when someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. Inside means the heart. This is the heart. It was contaminated by, this, by sin, by the devil. And you couldn't clean it up. But when you accept Christ, you become a brand new person. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. You see, when your heart is contaminated, the chemical composition of the water changes. It's not like the marble. For lo those of you who can remember chemistry, if I put this, this doesn't change the substance of the water. It doesn't change at all. So for the believer, you can remove the marbles. That's what I wanted to explain. Because you are, your heart is already pure. Your heart is cleaned by Christ. So sometimes you'll be offended, but as a believer, you can clean it up. You can remove those things. Your heart is brand new. If you're not a believer, your heart is contaminated. The very nature, the very composition, the very substance of your heart is contaminated by the enemy. You need an operation. This requires an operation by the Lord Jesus Christ to purify your heart, to bring the life of God in you. If you're following me on YouTube or Facebook and you want to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you want to be pure, your heart to be pure before God once more. You want your heart to be clean and purified by Christ. Pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Purify my heart. I commit my life to you. Cleanse me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I believe you are born again. Just write to me simple words. I prayed to be saved. If you write those words, I'm going to share with you some materials to help you grow as a Christian. I have exciting materials for new believers. Just write to me in this FB Live. I prayed to be saved. I'll share with you those materials. If you're following me on YouTube, write as a comment in this YouTube live, I prayed to be saved. I'll share with you materials to help you grow as a Christian. Have you been blessed by this message? Please leave a comment and share this video with others. Are you blessed by my ministry? You can partner with me in ministry by sending me your love offering every month through the giving options that I have shared with you on the screen. And if you'd like directions to come to our church in person, drop us a message by WhatsApp at 678-815-3402 and we will text you our church address. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos. I upload new videos every week. Thank you so much and God bless you.